Hey Pod Squad, welcome back to the channel. My name is Yona. And I'm Diksha. And we're both fourth years at CSPM. And today's video, this is honestly for pre-med students, where we're gonna give you guys advice to the students who know that they'll be uh, attending podiatry school um, over the summer. So uh, we just made a small little list here. So we wanna give you guys advice. And uh, this is in no particular order. Uh, so take this as you will. And if you like it, uh, let us know on the comment section down below. So starting with the first thing, here is research. Um, I know there are a lot of students who are probably interested in research and uh, one of the main things as they were uh, touring a podiatry school, they probably showed you their laboratory and some of the research that they were doing and you probably uh, caught something, something caught your interest, you know, or if you wanted to attend podiatry school and something interested you about the field and you want to do research, uh, this is a great opportunity as you're leading towards leading into podiatry school because now it's your time to actually brainstorm and we usually tell students the most important time to actually do your research is your first year because it takes time to really develop your research and get a team around it and get faculty to support you so I'd say this is a good time if you have a few months or even a few weeks to really think about uh, what research topics that really interest you yeah and there there are several journals that will we have in podiatry in school and of course outside of school that you can participate in so once you know actually this is such a great idea it's that was Yona's idea to think of this the good thing about having a good topic or a few few topics in your list before you even start school is that that fall a lot of journals start asking or at least one of the journals yeah. starts asking if uh, you have anything that you'd like to submit and so that's a good time a good time to already have it already kind of brainstorm right before school starts exactly um, second point is scholarships uh, this is something I also brought up with Diksha um, so for podiatry schools are particularly for CSPM uh, we are automatically merited scholarships based off our GPA and MCAT scores so that's a really nice thing about our school um, but uh, if you're a student who is thinking about uh, financial issues or somebody who's uh, financially thinking about how to like support themselves, scholarships is something that you should really look into before you start podiatry school because I wish I did that because uh, there's so many opportunities for you to apply for scholarships and for our school we have a scholarship portal that we can apply for and it automatically uh, applies us for 40 plus scholarships for, podi for podiatry alone. So if you're somebody who's interested um, in applying for scholarships, this is a good time to just do your research, maybe talk to some faculty, ask them about what scholarships they have to offer and really think, okay, how do I sort of set myself up to get that scholarship? Yeah, and sometimes even just asking upperclassmen again, mm -hmm. that, or any students who are already attending the podiatry school that you're interested in, uh, because sometimes there's stuff that not everybody knows, but mm -hmm. it's out there. And if you don't ask, you won't, won't be able to find out. Exactly. Okay. Um, third point here is uh, housing and transportation. Do you want to talk or should I talk still a little bit about that? You can, you can start. Okay. Um, so I know for myself, uh, before starting podiatry school, I know this was a big one, trying to find uh, housing and transportation. I know for us, Oakland uh, slash San Francisco area is super expensive. And you want to, if you want, you, you want to really scope up the area, see which areas are A, safe, uh, financially feasible for you and how close they are to school uh, all of these things you have to really consider especially as you're about to enter a new environment if you're not um, used to it so if there is a Facebook group that your school has or if you can contact one of the upperclassmen to ask to ask them how they kind of figured out how they got housing and what their housing situation was like that's really important getting advice from upperclassmen is like one of the biggest things i think i did that as a student i asked upperclassmen as well as i drove around the area before going to school there i was i had the opportunity to so i kind of scoped out the area as well um so everything worked out and then eventually long story short me and diction became roommates and yeah. yeah we saved a lot of money and we did a lot of things together yeah <laughs> exactly you might if you're like us and you're in a situation where, well, Yona already had a roommate, so he was lucky, but for me, I wasn't able to find someone to stay with, so I figured out what it's like to live alone the first mm -hmm. year and wasn't so sure I enjoyed it, but it's okay, I mean, if you end up in that situation, but 
for us, yeah, we had an incredible Facebook group where we would all talk about where we'd want to stay and our upperclassmen contributed and helped us out as well. Exactly. So yeah, use them, they're a good resource. Okay, now the next, the next number four <laughs> would be basic anatomy. So I think if, if you really, really can't not study and you really want to prepare before you start podiatry school, then go ahead and learn the basics of anatomy. And by that, I mean, if the words distal, proximal, caudal, rostral don't sound familiar to you or any of the cardinal <laughs> planes, then you can go ahead and learn those. And those, uh, Yona doesn't seem to remember, but it was really, it was difficult for us to, to understand in the beginning. And by us, I mean everyone I've ever spoken to if they have never taken anatomy courses before medical school. So do it. Um, if you really want to study, that's what I would study. Right. Okay, and then number five, or did you have anything else to say? No, about no, that? That, okay. was, that was good. Okay, so number five is something I would suggest if you have the time uh, before podiatric medical school, say you have a year or you know that way in advance that that's what you want to do in the future, I would totally suggest if you're looking for jobs, a medical assistant or a scribe. Mm -hmm. So what I used to think is I, I, I really wanted to make sure I had enough patient experience, right? Uh, experience with patients and interactions and really understanding bedside manner. And of course, having that on my application is important. So I was thinking, okay, medical assistant sounds incredible, but how am I going to do that with my limited time? I don't have two years to wait until I'm certified. But it turns out that a lot of the a lot of the medical assistant jobs out there, you can just go straight into clinic and you learn on the job. And so I okay, if if I could recommend I couldn't recommend it highly enough because a lot of the medical assistants we work with in private practice, you, you see this a lot, that they're doing a lot of the things that we've learned over time in school. So you pick up as a medical assistant, you pick up a lot of good things like hand skills that you learn in podiatric medical school. And then, of course, as you all know, being a scribe is one of the most popular and one of the best things that you could do if you have to choose a career uh, before podiatric medical school to prepare you. Mm -hmm. Okay, number six. Uh, number six, shadow podiatrist. Um, so this is not for everybody, but if you have time again, this is, so um, talking about the Again, medical assistant and scrub, I just wanted to highlight one more thing. That's for people who have some time off before it's starting podiatry school. I don't know if you can do it weeks before, if you have connections, if you were able to do that, then do it by all yeah. means. Um, so six point is shadow podiatrist. Then the reason why we mentioned this is because you probably shadowed a podiatrist already because that's one of the mandatory things to do. If you have to get a letter of rec for your application for podiatry school, so you've probably shadowed a podiatrist. Um, but for me, I didn't do this, but I think this would be a great opportunity for students who are starting podiatry school right before is just to get familiar with some of the podiatrists around the area and contact them because I know some first years who I talked to who actually contacted podiatrists around the area that we work with in our clinical rotations by our second and third year and actually started working with them right away. And that just A, establish personal connections with them and B, they're actually doing a lot of things that we would do as second and third year. So now they're learning all of this stuff and a lot of this stuff is applicable to the classes that we'll be taking our first, second and third years. So they're sort of getting a leg up as well as um, these personal connections that they're making is really good because now they're gonna be able to contact other podiatrists. It's gonna be easier. It's gonna be an easier transition for them to work with others. And honestly, it opens a lot of opportunities uh, not only just for working with them, but also possibly residency. They can give you a great letter of rec. They know other doctors in residencies that they've worked with be before. So it, it really is a positive thing that we would highly recommend if you have the time to do so. Yeah, and to add a little bit to that too, though that's excellent. Everything Yona said, so true. And also the reason I like it and I would have wanted to do it. In fact, okay, I. I was telling Yona, I actually remember the podiatrist that I shadowed right before I chose podiatry in the first place. So that was in 20, spring of 2018, if you've seen our other videos about why we chose podiatry. Mm -hmm. 
And those little experiences, I mean, the little things that they taught me, even though that was before podiatric medical school, I remember them and I actually apply them to this day. So if you can do that, it'll help you because there's things, if, if you'll realize, it's not that you become jaded or anything, but sometimes in your first and second years, you kind of forget your purpose. Why exactly you're studying what you're studying. You just get stuck in the minutia and it's almost hard to memorize at certain points because you get burnt out. But what could help possibly with it is just remembering, oh my gosh, that I saw this one thing in clinic and this might be might have been related to what I'm studying right now. Right. So it's helpful. And the last point, just to cut this video shorter, is relax. Uh, don't stress out before starting school. You're gonna be already stressed as you go through your first year. Like we always say, it's like drinking out of a fire hose, and it's and it's true. It's totally true. You're gonna be um, just swamped with information and exams and midterms and finals. Yeah. So take all the time you have and just really relax if you really want to. All the other tips that we mentioned before this, it, they're not they're not mandatory at all. No, they're, not. they're just only positives that can help benefit you. But if you decide to relax, which basically I did, yeah. I Me too. am happy. <laughs> yeah, we're both happy that we did that because yeah. I know I can easily recall my first year was very tough and I was yeah. very stressed and I was very burnt out. So yeah. take it from us, relax if you can. Um, and that's probably one of the more important points for this video. Yeah. We're only human, so don't push yourself. You're going to need all of that fuel for the next However, however many years you want to think of it, exactly. but yeah, you're, you're going to need it. So I'm sure you've heard this enough, but that's why we left it for the last, last piece. Relax, please do all of this as extra if you want, but most important is to relax. And, so yeah. with that being said, I hope you guys honestly liked some of the tips that we gave you today. Uh, this is just to help you guys out. If you guys have any more tips or if there's any other students who are watching this video, leave a comment down below. That would greatly be beneficial for all the pre-med students who are watching this video, as well as the students that are about to start podiatry school. Um, and if you guys have any questions or concerns, just email us at the dpmjourney at gmail.com or message us on Instagram at the podiatry journey. Um, and Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon oh yeah. because we have a lot more videos. We're really trying to get them all out. All the pre-med videos you could possibly get out. So we're here for you. Take care. Pod Squad signing out. Take care, guys.